Oh, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Drinking uh, my morning cup of coffee with, um, where's this from? I think it's Pete's Coffee from Java City. It's, uh, good. Um, I'm not here to talk to you about coffee, though. I'm here to talk to you about this. This is not oral hygiene. So I know some of you fiber guys have uh, been wincing and gritting your teeth <laughs> seeing the way I whip these fibers around, especially the way I clean the ends of them on my shirt. Um, so on the uh, recommendation of several of you, I bought this little click, clicker cleaner thing. Um, I don't know how well they work or if they work, but I figured I'd give it a shot. I've got an ongoing issue with several of my fiber pairs that um, is, the links just drop. So I'm going to try to, to use this thing here. I've already checked my switch this morning. Let me, uh, I'll show you in just a second here. Let me type something. Show interface gig state include link flap. So, you'll see here, make sure I don't have any, uh, oh, hang on a second. All right, let's, let's do this again, making sure I don't have any information I don't want you to see. There we go. Okay, you will direct your attention to the bottom of the screen here. So there's the command, show interface gig state, include link flap. And uh, you will see I got two interfaces right now that are down due to a link flap. And that's due to the fiber um, flapping up and down. So uh, what I'm gonna try to do is use this to clean those. So the first one is interface, uh, let's see, port two, port five. So one, two, three, four. So board two is over here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm blanking on two. So I know which one is which. So I'm going to do this guy off of here, and I'm going to attempt to use this thing to clean it. And then I'll knock the others off line. It is off. So supposedly all you have to do is put this over the end of the fiber, push it once, push it once, say it's once. Now I also want to clean the uh, SFP, so I take this little insert off, shove it in the SFP slot. And also extend this thing, so that's what I'm going to do. And now it's extending. And I'm going to shove this in the end of the SFP. All right, we'll see what that does. Uh, I'm going to do the fiber one more time since it's been dangling here. Put that back in and bring it back online. Problem is, the problem is that um, I'll bring this port back up. It will take a while to go back down. You know. Be gentle. Okay, so once the port's down like that, merely plugging it back in doesn't doesn't do the trick. So you actually have to uh, do what we call bouncing the interface, which is do a shut, no shut. 
So I'm going to go to config T, interface gig 2 slash 5, or port 2, port 5. Shut, no shut. Exit, exit. Now I'm just going to show the, the gig state, the interface state of interface port 5 number. Uh, Module five. Much. <laughs> Module two, four, five. How the heck did this guy get a job? I don't know. With God's grace, I guess. Show interface gig state two slash five. All right. So before. Mouse. So before we could see 2.5 was up and down due to a link flap. Hopefully you can see that. Now, when I just show the, the state of port module 2 port 5, it's up up. So it's showing it's good. So I'm going to do this to the uh, the other interface here, port 4. And uh, we'll do the same thing, we'll bounce the port. Now I'm not gonna make you wait while I, you know, do that again. You, you saw what I did. Pull it off. Clean it with the clicker. Plug it back in. Bounce the interface, and that should bring it back up. It does bring it back up. So now we'll just see how long this lasts. See if it's a dirty fiber on this end. May have to go out to the other end, which is more than likely where the the dirty fiber is, because that's out in the closet. It's pretty clean in here, fairly clean, but out in my closets it can get a little dusty. So um, I don't think there's any quiet place to stand in here. Uh, nope, there's not. But let me uh, let me get over. That's definitely not. So anyway, um, let's see what do we else we got this week. So. This is, this is the end of the week for me. It's uh, Thursday. I work Monday through Thursday. So this is my Friday. Um, the week has been uh, dotted with firewall work, which I admit I am, I am weak on firewalls. Uh, but both of them uh, involved uh, VPN tunnels, and, um, which is my weakest part of the firewall. So the first one is we've got a VPN tunnel that uh, everybody, we kind of assumed it keeps dropping and it has been dropping. Um, and I try to go onto my firewall and force it active, it won't come up. And we call the vendor and tell them to investigate. They say there's nothing wrong, but the, far, the tunnel magically comes up. Well, what do you know? So it's been happening periodically over the last couple of months. Um, so finally yesterday it happened again. We all got on a call and uh, we tried to bring the tunnel up by going to a, it's a website that we can only get, you can't get to it from the internet. You have to get to it from over a tunnel because it's an internal company website to them. And um, we couldn't get there. I said, well, what is, what is the, what are, URL are you using? And we, told them what server we were trying to get to. They said, well, what IP address does that resolve to? I told them. And they said, well, no, that's wrong. Okay, well, what IP address should we be going to? They told me, put it in, and got to the website, and the tunnel came up. So they said, well, that, that, uh, that DNS record needs to be corrected. I said, okay, so I looked in my DNS server and said, I don't have a record for that. So, what's that mean? means that it's out on the internet. We're getting it from the uh, internet uh, name server. And the guy asked me, well, who does that? I said, uh, you do, I guess, because I don't. I don't control your company's DNS records. So he goes, well, I don't work for them. I, they just contract with us for networking support. And I said. Oh, well, how unfortunate. 
then maybe you should call your, your employer and, and see if they can fix it. So he got another guy on the phone and he's like, well, you shouldn't be going to that IP address. And I said, well, yeah, that's what we just found out. What should we be going to? And he's looking into it, looking into it. And then apparently what had happened was uh, when they were doing initial spin up of this project and testing, they were pointing they were pointing the uh, DNS record directly to one of the servers. And what they should have been doing was pointing it directly to the load balancer um, that has a, a, an array of servers behind it. So uh, that's what the problem was. So he corrected the DNS record on the out. So it's now resolving correctly on the internet. I had to stop and restart DNS servers to, to pull that record back in and it started resolving correctly here. So that was quote unquote VPN issue number one. And then VPN issue number two yesterday was one I was kind of dreading. Um, a vendor who who kind of was dressing me down for making him wait so long to change his tunnel. Basically what was happening is one of our vendors was um, changing uh, firewalls. And uh, to do that, they brought up another firewall in parallel with a new, another IP address. So they basically wanted to change our, our VPN peer uh, at their location. And I said, okay, so I emailed him a couple times last week saying, hey, can we set up a call? No response, no response. Finally, at the end of last week, I get a very terse email saying, when am I going to get a resp response on from you guys? You're the second to the last site I have to migrate. And I very politely reminded him, well, I did send you two emails. And uh, so anyway, we got on the phone with him. And he was a nice guy on the phone. He just not very good with emails, but uh, very knowledgeable too. So I very much appreciated that. And uh, I told him, look, this, you know, we, he only scheduled half hour for this call. And in my experience, these VPN calls go on for like minimum four hours. But uh, this guy was good. I mean, borderline autistic. He was good. So, so we got on there and I said, well, look, I, you want me to just change the endpoint? And he goes, well, yeah, we could just do that. And then I can make everything match what, you know, the old, the old VPN was. But we've kind of cleaned everything up over here and I'd kind of like to clean it up on your end too. But you know, if, if that's what you want to do. And I said, no, man, you're, you're driving this. You, you want us to make the change. What do you want from us? And he tells me, well, ideally we could set up a, a parallel tunnel. I said, well, luckily, ideally I already did that. Uh, so soon in there, we had to change a few things around. Uh, I had to change the pier. Well, the, the new tunnel had the peer. What I didn't have is proxy IDs. Now there's a couple Palo Alto guys out there that'll know what a proxy ID is. And Cisco, ID, Cisco guys are gonna be going, what the heck is that? Well, unless you've dealt with Palo Alto firewalls. So in the Cisco world, you set up an ACL. Say only these things can connect to this VPN. And on this, the Palo Alto side, it doesn't work that way. But to interact with, with uh, uh, firewalls that do work that way, they have this, this thing called proxy IDs, where basically you set that up and it kind of mimics an ACL to the Cisco and makes the Cisco happy. So uh, we had to set up the proxy IDs. We got that, that all set up. And uh, I'm sorry I can't show you guys this, but yeah, firewall. So you just have to rely on my poor description skills. Um, so we got that all set up. And um, one nice thing about doing it this way is I just I got to add routes rather than changing all the existing routes that we had going to that tunnel. And uh, that worked out really well. I got it all set up. And he, he said, uh, well, you know what? I got to go to another meeting. Just just let me know when you when you finish your site set up. And uh, then I'll I'll, I'll swap everything over from my end. And I said, okay, cool. And he, we went through all my setups, and he verified everything looked looked good for what he had. And um, so basically, I just added added these new routes and IP addresses to the existing security policies, and um, that worked like a champ. So 
he, as soon as I sent him the email, I said, okay, it's swapped over. I mean, within five minutes, he emailed back and said, okay, I moved everything over, it looks good. No way. It can't be that easy. I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop that. Um, I'm on call this week and I didn't get any calls last night about it. So, um, so we'll have to do some cleanup on that and go and take out his, uh, the old networks that uh, he's no longer using, that we're no, no longer going to. So uh, that'll be good. Uh, get that all cleaned up. So that was pretty much the bulk of the day yesterday and a bunch of meetings. So, and then coming up, we have uh, something I'm moderately concerned with. Not really, but it's usually not a big deal. Is upgrading the OS on the uh, firewall. We have four physical firewalls: one active standby for the internet, one active standby for uh, it's a, what we call it an east-west firewall. It's uh, we have several different VRFs, virtual routers within our core. And this firewall does the route, routing between those VRFs. Um, the core doesn't route between the VRFs itself. It sends it out to the firewall. So uh, yeah, those two, two firewalls, and each of them have an active standby, working a pair. And then there's a panorama appliance that controls it all and does all the configuration. So. That's the thing we got to do, probably not next week, because next week is Labor Day holiday here in the U.S. So Monday is a day off for me. And then I'm taking my wife on a much needed vacation next week, so. And then, so yeah, probably in a week or, probably in two or two to three weeks, we'll do that upgrade. So upgrade panorama, upgrade firewall number one, firewall number two, firewall number three, firewall number four. Um, yeah, so that's what's coming up. And then after that, the only other big thing going is a wireless project. We're still trying to get good quotes. You get a wireless survey. Once the survey's done, they're going to come back with a, here's where we think your APs should be. And then over the next two or three months, we'll be moving those APs over, have the vendor come back in, recertify everything, and then that's... Uh, going to be my last big project for a while so there you go that's all we got for this week um, if you like what you saw click the subscribe button click the notification bell if you so desire thumbs up thumbs down um, keep those great comments coming I mean you guys have given given me ideas um, I can't even remember what the one was but it, it <laughs> one of you guys had a really good comment and uh, it made me think and it made me change something I did. I'm going to have to go back and look at my notes and see what that was. But standing here in the data center, I can't think of what it is. And so, uh, okay, I'm going to go back over and clean that other fiber pair and uh, make sure no other, you know, me bumbling around in there hasn't dropped any other connections. So, as always, guys, keep those co great comments coming, keep those prayer requests coming, and remember, Soli Deo Gloria. To God alone be the glory. God bless. See you guys all next week. Back.